What's that one story you've always wanted to tell on r slash ask reddit, but no one has ever asked the right question? A few weeks ago I was visiting Los Angeles. I'm from Spain, but I'm fluent in English. I needed help finding directions to a certain address. I'm in downtown at this point, on foot. I ask a guy in the street if he knows where the address is. He responds with, no hablo inglés which is I don't speak English in Spanish. Being from Spain, I understood him, and asked him again in Spanish. Then he says, in crystal clear English, dude, I just don't wanna talk to anyone. Leave me alone. I live in a small rural town. When I was 7, my parents let my older sister and I ride our bikes about 3.5 miles into town to get lunch at the only restaurant in town, which my mom's cousin owns. I didn't realize how long of a ride 3.5 miles was and was hot and tired and crabby and burned my tongue on my burger, so I threw a fit and refused to ride my bike home. A stranger overheard my sister and I arguing about this and offered me a ride home. He said he could just put my bike in the back of his truck and everything would be fine. My sister agreed because she didn't want to have to call my parents to come pick us up and she was tired of my whining and also she was 10 years old and dumb. I realized on the drive home that I hadn't given the man directions or told him my name, but he somehow knew my name and where I lived. He dropped me off at home, helped me put my bike in the garage, and then drove down the road to go visit my grandparents. It turns out, the man was my grandpa's brother, one of 12 siblings. He recognized me because I look just like my mom did at that age. So when I was very young, they released a large number of pedophiles from jail in one go in my town. This led to my mother explaining to her vocabulary proficient 3 year old toddler what a pedophile was, and that they are bad people who want to hurt little kids. Well a couple weeks later I get lost in the mall. My parents start frantically looking and hear me screaming pedophile at the top of my lungs. They race over and it's this little old lady who had tried to ask me if I was lost. Apparently she was mortified. It's been 24 years and it's still brought up at family functions. Update, they got released to being done their sentence or out for good behavior or what not. You surprisingly can't keep people in jail past their time. Who knew? 6th grade. I had hit a major growth spurt so most of my clothes didn't fit and my family couldn't afford new ones. Once winter came around, the only jacket I had that I could still fit in even a bit was much too thin to be of any use. My teacher noticed and I walked into class one morning to see a big, fluffy winter coat on the back of my chair and a chicken soup for the sole book on my desk. Her kindness still makes my eyes water, even almost two decades later. Ms. Robertson, if you're reading this. Thank you. I never forgot. I accidentally stole a car. I had just gotten off work. I was working two jobs at the time and I got barely any sleep. I walked out and got into my car, started it up, and started driving home. I didn't realize something was wrong until I couldn't find my aux cord, and then I started realizing that there were things in the car that were not mine. Like the child seat in the back. I was an 18 year old with no kids. I flip a U-turn and bust ass back to work to hopefully get the car back before its owner notices it's gone. I didn't. Cops were there and I was very quickly arrested. Owner dropped charges only after three things were done one. I showed my keys unlocked and started her car. Then pointed to my car which was the same model, color, and year two. One of my co-workers vouched for the fact that the customer parked in the spot I almost always parked in 3. Camera footage was pulled for the past 9 days I had worked showing that 7 of those days I parked in that spot and the other 2 I parked close to it. Edit, y'all. The cops were doing their job and were polite about it because I cooperated. And the owner was right to be angry. I was a punk ass kid who in her eyes had just stolen her car. Or at least took it out for a joyride. The owner was a single mother and wasting any of her gas could have meant bad things. Please stop saying they were assholes. Was walking to the mailbox late one morning because I was expecting something important. The mailbox is roughly a half mile from my house and on the way I have to pass a bus stop. I was moseying along when I see the bus pull up but I don't think much of it because it's hot and I'm tired and I'm not getting on the bus, I'm just going to the mailbox. Well. 
The bus waits and waits and waits. The bus is not leaving without me. Do I walk past the bus and ignore the situation? Do I thank the driver for waiting but explain I'm just getting the mail? No. I get on the fucking bus. What do I do next? I miss the stop I was planning to get off on. Next stop? Next town over. Bus only comes by once an hour. And that is how I ended up drinking tequila in a Walmart parking lot at noon. Never did make it to the mailbox. One time in second grade, we were taking a state standardized test. That means all day no talking and filling in bubbles. One kid who sat across from me who I haven't heard say a word all year, this was the end of the year, stands up in the middle of the test in complete silence and says in an almost shout, has anyone seen Aladdin I reply, the movie the kid says, what movie in quite the inquisitive tone and sits back down and goes back to taking the test as if that didn't just happen. Everyone was shocked including the teacher. No one said a word after that. Weirdest moment of my life. I saw a black and white cat club. As in a club whose members were the neighborhood black and white cats. I happened to glance across the street one night and saw about 5 or 6 cats heading for a neighbor's backyard. I recognized all the cats, none of them had the same owner. There was the grumpy one owned by the old lady two houses down, the one that lived on the other side of the block, the probable stray, ect. Then I looked closer and saw my new little black and white kitten with them. What really makes this stick out to me was that it was only black and white ones. None of other cats in the area, and I know there were other, differently colored cats in the area. I'm still scratching my head over what that was. Welcoming party? Gang meeting? Cult initiation ritual? Has anyone else ever seen cats do this? Edit. So apparently cats holding secret neighborhood meetings for clubs cults gangs is a weird thing cats do. Our feeble human sensibilities can't comprehend it. The only thing standing between us and complete dominance by our feline overlords is their lingering problem with color inclusivity. This is my favorite story about my husband. For a little bit of context, my husband went to an Ivy League school. He's, usually, a very smart dude. He and I take turns picking TV shows to binge on. Me, I want to pick Law and Order, SVU, Special Victims Unit, for my next show. Him, up, uh, I don't know, it's not really my thing. Me, what? You love crime shows? Come on, I love SVU. It's one of my favorite shows ever. Him, completely incredulous, really? I've only seen one episode, but it was really weird. He eventually capitulated, and we started watching SVU. A few episodes in, he admits that he's enjoying it and that it wasn't what he thought it would be like. We watch a few seasons, and finally get to an episode that starts like this, paraphrasing, Lady, I need to report a crime, my daughter's been raped, she's pregnant. Detective Stabler, how old is your daughter? Lady, she's 22, Stabler, well mom. Your daughter is an adult so she can file her own report. Lady, why don't you come meet her? At this point, my husband says so. This is the only episode I'd seen. Detective Stabler approaches the woman's daughter, who is looking down, her hair covering her face. I'm Detective Stabler, he says. The girl looks up. She has Down syndrome. My husband pauses the episode. So. Because this is the only episode I had seen. And the show is called Special Victims Unit. I about pissed myself laughing. He really thought there were hundreds of episodes of Law and Order dedicated to solving crimes against the handicapped. I love him, but damn. 